Box truck gang, what up? We back on the truck, we back on YouTube. I know it's been a minute since I did a video, but I'm not that active on here these days. I'm way more active on Instagram. Um, as y'all know, I dispatch, so on Instagram, I post my rates, I post my recons. I interact with people a lot more than on YouTube. So if y'all have been commenting and leaving comments on YouTube, I really haven't been checking them that much. So, um, so yeah, go follow the channel if y'all not following the channel, at Box Truck Bros. So I know, um, y'all want to get into the number 29,000 in 28 days, but before we get into that, I want to give y'all an update of, of what's been going on. So y'all know I had a driver since August and he's been with me ever since then. Um, he's been West coast, he's been all over the country for real, for real. And he's not been home one time, you know, not once. So he just set the bar kind of high, you know, for future drivers and things like that, you know, but he had to handle some stuff back in New York. So just last week he came back and um he went up to new york and take care of personal stuff once he finished that finished with that then he'll come back on um i don't know who, how soon that's going to be but for now i'm back in the truck and i'm going over the road until maybe like march well whenever whenever the winter really clear up you know that's when i'm kind of come back and you know really try to run it up and things like that you know so right now i'm getting the truck service you know tires um oil change I had a brake light that needed to be fixed. Um, you know, so really just getting the truck maintenance to, uh, you know, really kind of be ready to go to the road for 30, 45 days, however long. Also an update with my truck. I've been having some death system problems, DPF. A lot, a lot of things with the death system has been, you know, going, going kind of bad. Um, and that's kind of been putting a, a bad taste in my mouth as far as buying trucks. Um, you know, cause they say once your death system go bad, it's kind of like an ongoing problem, you know, after that. And I know you can, heard you can get deleted. That's a little illegal, you know, but um, I didn't want to go that route, um, you know, but ever since the deaf problem, you know, has been, well, ever since the deaf system has been giving me problems, I kind of been against the whole, you know, buying trucks and things like that. So I've been looking into renting trucks and uh, I've been getting, you know, high, high quotes, nine, nine something per week uh you know only traveling a certain amount of miles so i, I hit up rider i hit him enterprise and you know it was almost around eight nine thousand dollars and that's that shit was not it wasn't gonna be you know real profitable so i ended up hitting up trucking out the box as y'all know they do the rentals over there um they actually they actually just got on instagram so go follow their instagram channel at trucking out the box you know but so when i was looking to get into the rentals i hit i hit them up and you know we never really talked um, really on YouTube like that, you know, we comment on, on, on each other videos and, uh, you know, just like notoriety, you know, like, yo, congratulations, I see what you're doing, things like that. But we never really had like a, a actual conversation, you know, um, but when I was looking to get into the rentals, I actually hit them up because I know they talk about their rental plug or whatever. So I hit them up, um, to get on with the rentals and man, real, real, real humble, real down, down to earth people, um, real genuine. You know, we talked for like three hours over the phone and, um, and you know, he was pretty much telling me, you know, I could put you on with uh, my rental account manager, uh, you know, he'll get you the same race as me. And, um, you know, he said that he gonna hit me up the next day from the day that we talked. He said, I'm gonna hit you up tomorrow and you know, I'm gonna plug you in. Me personally, I take things with a grain of salt, you know, um, nothing against no one, you know, but you know, a lot of people say they're gonna do X, Y, and Z and never really live up to it, you know? So you never really set yourself up to believe you know, anything, you know, but if it come through, then cool, you know, so long story short, next day, man, hit me up, just like he said, and he was like, yo, I just talked to my rental car manager, I gave him all your information, he waiting, uh, he waiting for your call, so I called him, and he like, yeah, uh, you know, Courtney told me y'all real good friends, um, he told me to take care of you, you know, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look out for you, and I'm gonna give you the same race I gave him, uh, 576 per week. I don't know if they, these same race they gave him, but the race they gave me was 576 per week at 12 cents per mile. And, um, you know, he's pretty much, and I asked him, you know, like, can you rent as many trucks as you want? He's like, yeah, you know, as long as you pay for them, as long as you're paying, then you can rent as many as you want. So that's kind of the route that I'm going now. And, uh, you know, later I'll, 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 once I get in the rentals, I'll do a video, you know, from, experiencing both sides of, you know, renting and also financing. Um, I know a lot of people, I don't know if people start out renting or financing if they did a video, but I may do a video, you know, from the rental side and the uh, the owner side, you know, so pretty much they plugged me in with their rental account manager 
And um, like I said, man, real, real good people. We actually did a live on Instagram. That was kind of solid. Uh, we may do a part two. I'm not sure. Um, we, we may do a part two. I'm not sure. You know, but uh, yeah, real, real good people over there. And, um, you know, nothing but, but good things to say about them. I really feel like I'm forever indebted because that was a major alley-oop, a major plug. Because as y'all know, these truck prices right now is kind of crazy with 15, 20,000 down. Um, also with the rental, the race are crazy, you know, so without them, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to, you know, roll out the, the kind of plans that I really had, you know, wanted to after the winter time come around. So that's, that's, that's where we at with it as far as trucks and, and, um, you know, what's, what's to come. So now let's get into the video of which I came to see 29,725 in 28 days. Um, I actually didn't get to go the whole 31 days because like I say, I went like 28 and then the back door had to get replaced. So I had to get back to um, a shop and then I also had to, um, you know, the dev system started filming. So after that, man, it seemed like once a week something was going on and I wasn't able to do a whole 31 days. So let's get into the numbers. I'm gonna post the numbers on the screen. I didn't do every load, you know, cause I don't got time to be doing that, but I did about a week. So I'm gonna post the numbers on the screen so I can check those out and then we are gonna go from there. All right, so as I see the breakdown for the uh, for the four weeks, I started out with the gross, and then I did the average rate per mile for loaded miles, and then the average rate per mile, including the deadhead, and then um, the gas hotel, what I paid my driver, and then what I netted for that week, and then also the net percentage for that week. So I'm not gonna touch on every week, I'm just gonna kind of skip down to the bottom. Um, as I see, I'm averaging around like 250 per mile loaded, and then 231 per mile with deadhead. As I see, those numbers are kind of close, the 250 and 230, so that means that I'm not doing a whole lot of deadhead. Um, after I pay everything, all my expenses, it comes out to 13,257.62. Um, and don't get it wrong, I have been in business for a year, and um, I'm pretty good at dispatching, you know, so if you have a new authority, or you know, if you have a dispatcher, um, you know, you may not be seeing these rates, and we're gonna we're we're gonna touch on to why you're not seeing these rates, and also how you can see these rates. So, um, me and trucking on the box, we did a live, and uh, someone had asked why are the rates so trash for box trucks, and I guess that would kind of tie into um, you know people saying that there's no money in box trucks when. In fact, there's a lot of money in box trucks. Um, there's a lot of money in the transportation industry in general, right? It's just you have to, you have to have the dispatch down. Um, you know, it ain't just you go buy a truck and then, you know, fucking brokers gonna be calling you left and right to run loads. Like, no, it's more than just getting on the load board and booking the load, right? Like, dispatching is a strategic way to dispatch, and especially for box trucks because, you know, it's not as much work for box trucks, but there is some work and there is uh some some brokers that pay well um you know it's a, it's a little bit more tedious but once you get the box truck dispatch kind of down then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make a lot of money and as i see you know with with my rates and also what i gross these are pretty good numbers you know for a box truck and then also with the net you know some people you know you can grow six thousand or seven thousand you know but at what rate you know so when it comes to the higher the rate that's mean the less you're driving per mile you know so um let's kind of get into I guess uh, why people say that the rates are so trash for box trucks. And as I say, it's strategic. So just getting on the low board and, you know, booking a low, that's not gonna do it. You know, you have to be in, in, in certain states and in certain areas because certain states pay different from other states, you know? So when you kind of keep your truck in these states that pay well, then you're gonna see good rates. Now, if you're going to bad paying areas, let's say, Colorado, um, New Mexico, let's say Montana, um, Cali race are bad right now, Florida, you know, when you're going to Oklahoma, you know, when you're going to these these states that don't pay well, you can't negotiate two cents per mile. You can't negotiate two, you know, because they don't pay that. You know, so you have to consistently keep your truck in these um in these good paying areas. And that's the job of the dispatchers to, you know, kind of know these things, you know. But some people, they take high paying rates. They see a good low, you know, paying 250, 240, going to a low paying area. And then once you get there, you're gonna see something. And don't get me wrong to say you can't see, you know, $2 coming out of the barrier. 
you can, you know, but it's just but the majority of the rates, uh, majority of the loads that's posted are going to be bad rates, you know, so people take high paying rates to low paying areas, then they kind of get stuck. And then once they get to these low paying areas that don't pay well, like I said, there's lanes, right? So um, if you're in a low paying area, there may only be a lane going from, you know, let's say like uh, Vegas to Texas or, you know, Utah to Cali, you know, you know, so now it's kind of like you got to take these lows and those are going to be low paying lows, you know, so you got to kind of keep your trucks in um, certain areas. And also, you know, when you're a driver, you should be educated on on dispatching one because you know you want to be aware of the areas you're going to right like so if i had a dispatcher a dispatcher can't just send me to anywhere because i'm gonna know that nah this is not a good area um you know no I'm, i might be stuck you know so and especially if it's consistent like i said i know it's sometimes where you may drop off late or you know there's nothing else moving and you may got to take these loads so that you don't sit but if it becomes like a consistent problem or a consistent thing where I'm going to bad areas or my rates are kind of low, you know, then I'm kind of like, you know, I, I, I may need to find a new dispatcher. Um, and second, the most important thing is, this is your business. You started this business and you don't want your business to kind of, you know, uh, be in someone else's hands, you know, like whether you succeed or fail is because you don't have a dispatcher, or, you know, you can't find a good dispatcher. Like, and I understand, you know, that's what a lot of people rely on, you know, but is 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 it's very vital that you educate yourself um when it comes to dispatching because like I say you put you know if you go out and invest twenty thousand, fifteen thousand to this truck and you lose all that because someone else, that's that's really just kinda, you know, your fault, you know. So it's best that you learn learn it and then that way, you know, you can do it yourself. You can teach other people how to do it. And also once you you know, then you can start scaling, you know, because let's just say if you start scaling or you start buying more trucks or you know all these trucks and you got a dispatcher and let's just say something happened to them they get sick or they, they just stop dispatching now you got to go and find another dispatcher or whatever you know so it's best that you learn to do it yourself you know you can scale um you know you can supply your own work you can see good rates you can kind of you know control everything um you know so that's that's the biggest thing of of you know educating yourself when it comes to dispatching and then, and, then, and then also, um, something I want to touch on too is there's there's different sides to the business, right? It's like this one big fucking pie that everybody's trying to get a piece of. You got you got the shipper who posts the load, and then you got the broker trying to get some money. You got the dispatcher trying to get some money, and you got the carrier trying to get some money. Um, you know, and I respect I respect every lane: dispatcher, broker, carrier. I respect all all fields um, of it. You know, and if you are a dispatcher, let's say if you're not an owner operator. And you sign off a dispatch company. Your main goal is to dispatch as many trucks as you can, right? Now, of course, you want to keep them at at a good rate, you know, so that way you're able to keep drivers, um, you know. But you're probably not. You may be looking for, I guess, you know, a higher rate. But no matter if I booked you at two thousand dollars, right? Let's say I find a load for two thousand. Well, if I get that load for one sixty per mile, one seventy per mile, one eighty per mile, one forty per mile, I get a ten percent or whatever percentage of that two thousand, you know. So um, I would say on the dispatching side, you know, I guess their goal is to dispatch as many trucks as possible at a you know a comfortable rate where they can keep people moving. Um, you know, so if this kind of like my dispatcher, I'm not a dispatcher. Um, I'm sure he had four or five trucks, right? So I'm not priority. He's not only looking for me, right? So if you have a truck in let's say Chicago, a truck in Texas, a truck in Cali, and a truck in um, I don't know Florida probably why I'm checking for it, but you got four trucks you're dispatching. You can only look for one load at a time. You can't look for four loads um, at a time. You can't call four different brokers at a time, you know? So while you're searching for a load for one truck, you're missing loads for another truck, right? So in order to maintain that balance, you have to, you know, kind of not hurry up and book a load, but you can't really spend all day looking for the highest rate for these trucks. You know, you probably getting booked at, what's your boss say, you know, 180, Two dollars one ninety is really not that bad, you know, because um, you know you may have a, a a dispatcher who got a couple of trucks, and you know you got to keep them moving. So that's that's one thing that I noticed about you know my dispatcher. Like I say, when when um when I was working with him, you know I was saying okay, race don't get me wrong, you know, but also you know the first day I started dispatching, I found a load before him, you know, so that kind of already let me know that you're not really focusing on my truck, right? And um and 
I'm missing loads or I'm missing loads waiting on you. And who knows how many times I have been, you know, where, you know, I've seen low rates because you're looking for other drivers. And I, I respect it. That, that's just a business, you know, but that's why I say, you know, it's an, it's important for you to dispatch because you probably nine times out of 10 are not priority, you know, for your dispatcher. Um, and, you know, it may, it may fuck with your rates or, you know, with your gross, you know, so on the dispatch side, there's a lot of dispatchers who have multiple trucks and you are not priority. And then also, you know, if you have a dispatcher, like I say, you don't know how good their level of dispatching is, right? Because when it comes to dispatching, especially with box trucks, nine times out of 10, they're probably on DAT or truck stop. On DAT, I know, that's like, you know, I use Selectus, um, which is okay, it's not detected, but on DAT, these loads go fast, right? Like the first minute these loads get posted, Dumb Jones is gone for like in like the first two minutes. If a load is, if a load is sitting up on the load board for, more than three or four minutes, it's because it's either um, the shit paying terrible or, you know, it, the, the, the the dimensions or it's has now some some special some special reason. Um, but the, these these loads go out fast on the lower board and you have to trust that, you know, your dispatcher is constantly looking at the lower board, right? So, like I say, you can't even make a damn sandwich, you know, before a load is gone. As soon as that load get posted, if you take your eyes off the phone or off the load board for 10 seconds, you can be five seconds too late, 10 seconds too late, and you may miss a load, you know? So you have to trust that your dispatcher is constantly, constantly looking at the load board 24 seven, you know? And I don't know how many people is always looking at the load board 24 seven without taking your eyes off. You know, you can look over here. You, you can change the channel. You can go use the bathroom and miss a load. Um, you know, so you gotta trust that your, your dispatcher is doing these things and, um, you know, which, which all affects the race and things like that. You know, so these are really some of, you know, the reasons why, you know, you're not seeing good rates and things like that. Um, you know, so I say the biggest thing is to educate yourself on dispatching. And also when it comes to running, like if y'all see, um, if, if, if y'all look at um, Trucking Out The Box, they did a video where it say you make 30K in 30 days, right? Um, and they mentioned something about running in the five to 700 mile radius, which is also how I run. I don't really take uh, lows unless it's like a two day low. Um, you know, I really kind of stick to five to 700 miles, um, per day for a low and bare minimum. I like to see 6,000 per week. I don't see nothing less than four. I don't see nothing less than 5,000. Now it's been a week where I've seen like 5 or 55. That's because the truck break down. But when it comes to like the truck up and running me dispatching, I don't see less than 6,000 per week. And that's because I do, I do, I try to do 600 miles per day at bare minimum two hours per mile, right? So you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's 1,200 times five, that's $6,000. Now as I see my rates per mile is kind of high, like 250, 230. So if I book a load for 600 miles, I'm getting around 1,500. You know, if I book a load for 700, 800 miles, I'm saying 2,000, you know? So that's why my gross is so high because as I say, I'm dispatching or I don't, I don't take, you know, 400 miles, $800, 300 miles, 600, I don't take those jobs. I, I take, five to 700 mile radius stand within certain states that pay well. And you know, that's kind of how I run. I only run in like 13 or 14 states. I don't go out Cali. I don't go past, I don't even really go to Texas. I don't go past Missouri, um, you know, things like that, you know. So it's a way to, you know, like I say, um, kind of plan out, you know. And like I say, this is not, you know, a say all be all, you know, not every load is going to be five to 700, you know. Um, then maybe I may find a load for 400, 300 miles for a thousand dollars. I'm gonna take that, you know. Um, and I may make it up on the back end, you know, next day I may do 615, you know. Um, but like I say, it's a strategic way to dispatch and it's best that you guys learn how to dispatch and be educated, you know, so that you see these rates. Um, that's gonna be the, the the end of this video, I'm gonna wrap it up. And um, like I said, I'm about to go over the road. So I have some I have some over the road content to post. And also, like I say, I do um, IG Live every Sunday at 8 p.m. on Instagram. So you know, we do Q&A and, you know, it's going to kind of chop it up. So follow the channel at Bosch Bros. And yeah, I catch y'all soon.